In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Oh, sorry, wrong uh. video. <laughs> that, that's for that's for my um uh, my biblical rapping channel. <laughs> yeah, that's where you post Christian raps for children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, my shit's kind of fire on there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can tell. Yeah. This is it. Judgment, Judgment Day. <laughs> I I love that song by Five Figure Death Punch. <laughs> I was thinking like, never mind. Okay. Hey everyone, you remember from the last time we played this game because you better remember shit because this is the final day. This is the last time we get to go to trial for this case. Von Karma hit us with a stun gun <laughs> and he was like, he was like, yo, he, oh wait, hang on, what's his voice? Um, you guys will never see this evidence again, you fucking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and then Maya's like, no! And she's like, ah, ah, ah. oh yeah. He That's also took shit from our court record. Oh, wait, did he? Yeah, it said he took shit from us. Okay, so instead of having the letter, the letter that says, like, basically, like, get the revenge and shit, we got a DL6 bullet taken from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. So we should show that to fucking Edgeworth. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, here you go, Edgeworth. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, a bullet. And we're like, yeah, this is the one that you shot your dad with. He's like, <laughs> he's like, You're gonna give him a panic attack. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Today, things are going to be settled at last. A lot of things. What? What was the big idea? Sorry, dude. I only touched your shoulder. Oh, yeah, you got it. Andrew Wiener. Come on, bitch, he's 17. Stop forgetting this. I didn't say I touched her. I said she touched us. Oh, my God. Don't do that either. <laughs> it's like those, um... It's like... Why are you grabbing my applesauce? I want a little scoop. <laughs> what the fuck? This one. <laughs> I, I I literally let let the court record show that I asked her for if she wanted applesauce before this video, <laughs> and then she takes this shit from me. Anyway, it's probably good that you interrupted me. I was about to say some stupid shit. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run in with the stun gun yesterday. Yeah. She, she's like she's like, damn, that event was shocking. Dude. And, and then shit. Phoenix is like, Phoenix shoots her with a stun gun again. <laughs> I currently have six out of the still left in my system to get rid of. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. You're gonna need it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, I heard you have a bullet to show me. <laughs> hey, I got a bullet for you. <laughs> <laughs> Edgeworth is looking gloom as always. I hope Von Conrad doesn't push him too hard. What the- Whoa! Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, I'm- I'm sorry. I just thought I'd ch ch cheer you up with a pat on the back. Oh my god, she just like, you got it, buddy! And <laughs> shock the shit out of her. I'm realizing that now. I, I thought it was just like- Phoenix did that? Uh, no, I thought we were just like getting scared by her. I didn't realize she was like actually shocking people. <laughs> Maybe you should go outside and discharge? What a rude thing to say to a woman! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, good idea! Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Yeah, she's like, You're doing a good job there, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, pal! Is that gumshoe? <gasps> Hello! What's gotten into that girl? The toxic gumshoe! Good morning, Mr. Edward. <coughs> Sorry. Applesauce went down the wrong hole. I can put it down a different hole. Shut up. Uh, good, good morning. How did it go, detective? I was about to say, it's your line. <laughs> I forgot how to read it. <laughs> I have no fear, as promised. I've captured our runaway take, take care. <laughs> yeah. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Dr. Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yeah, he was like, I'm gonna fucking pass out, and then Maya was like, Hi there, Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> Yo, why, why do I feel like, uh, why do I feel like Maya's going to, like, shock Yogi? Like, like pat him on the back or something like that? And he's gonna, like, regain his memories. Yeah, all that oxygen depraved damage that happened in the elevator, undone with one electrical shock from a teenager. <laughs> yeah, if this was, like, um... An Izakai? <laughs> No, I'm j oh. I was just saying if this was, like, a completely, like, unrealistic... Like, I mean, some of the things in this are, like, a little bit unrealistic, but 
it tries to stay in line with things that like can actually happen. Yeah. In what do you real mean life. unrealistic? These are the most realistic cases that are gonna happen in Ace Attorney. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, even the spirit medium shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have bad news for you, buddy, for the second and third game. <laughs> no. Especially the third game. No, 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 but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying for, like, if, uh, you know, this game has, like, a good amount of, like, realism in it. Like, things that can, like... And then you got like, Maya. <laughs> things that can actually happen. So, like, I don't think it would actually, like, we'd be, it'd be so convenient that, like, she'd shock him and then he'd regain it. That's, like, some fairy tale bullshit. Yeah. Well, so it's like the adrenaline thing. Like, when you get a boost of adrenaline, it heightens all your senses. And then after a while, it, like, slowly goes down and you get back to normal. Yeah. But that has to be a lie. That Yagi, Yogi doesn't remember anything. I forgot to read that last line. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally hit A. It's fine. Just, why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember. And I'm gonna prove it. I'm huffing and puffing. He's got a big chest. I think I think sleeping with Gumshoe would be very comfortable, like, as, like, a body pillow. <laughs> When I meant sleep with him, I meant like, like sleep, not like sex. All right. <laughs> Weirdo. The court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Shake my head. Did you get hit with a stun gun or something yesterday, Phoenix? The prosecution is ready. Uh, all right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Oh. Come on, don't be all into silence with everything he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. What? It's, a, uh, It's misdirect- classic misdirection. Oh my god, yeah. Very well. Please bring the witness to the courtroom. How do I make- uh, yep. <laughs> I'm gonna make him sound drunk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where we witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Ooh. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away as he will now testify. Uh, uh, I, I see. What do you mean? Very well, please begin your testimony. What do you mean he didn't run away? He was not at the shop! There's him. Man, I, I gotta go home and make some pasta. <laughs> I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went and buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I, er, I mean, know I need one of those motive things, right? I don't got one of those. So my testimony yesterday stands that it is. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? Sorry, I was powering through my applesauce. I was just stuff. imagining <laughs> this the judge eating applesauce while he's listening to the testimonies and the defense and prosecution going back and forth. Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh shit, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, he, like, he's like, aren't you gonna, like, raise an objection? Like, aren't you gonna say anything, judge? And the judge is like, oh, and he's like, has like applesauce drizzling down his mouth. <laughs> hey, applesauce, applesauce is really good. Especially cinnamon applesauce? Yeah. That shit fire. Mm hmm Anyways. He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi and I'm gonna prove it. Here, why don't you why don't you come a little closer to me, Carmen? Why don't you come closer to the mic? Are you really sorry? Uh, I'll call what you did running away, but not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized that you were in danger. <laughs> Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. <laughs> Listen to the testimony, <laughs> you dickhead. He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do, Bon Karma and Yanni Yogi. But I wasn't running away or nothing. 
Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Just listen, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Basically what I just said. <laughs> if I sat quietly, Ezra would be guilty in three minutes. I, uh, went to the to buy some food for Polly, see? Food? Yeah, got her a chicken sandwich. <laughs> Polly's a bit of a gourmet, see? She only eats those high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them at the big pet store downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caker's shack? Er, well, uh, kind of got lost, see? The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Was he? Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. Don't worry. The judge gets dumber as these games go on. Figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You got... You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Er, yeah, yeah. That seems like it. Then how could you know that you haven't had anything to do with this incident? Ugh. Or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. <sighs> how am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old collar's head? It's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. <laughs> uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? I don't got one. How can you say you don't have a motive? I see you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have proof he's lying about his memory. <sighs> Otherwise, I'm gonna be this- wait, it's going to be the same thing over and over until this trial ends. Uh. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. <laughs> You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really- <coughs> Oh shit. <coughs> Sorry, applesauce in my throat. Come on, Judge, stay with us. <laughs> does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said that he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Oh, there's or, a lot. Are you saying? Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh, 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 now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. Gregory! <laughs> How interesting would that be if 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 it was if this was actually his dad? <laughs> that would be fucking crazy. There's like okay, my 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 idea of what would be like so number one, if this was his dad, that would be like the craziest thing. Yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Number two, if this was Robert Hammond and the guy that was actually like pronounced dead was actually Yanni Yogi. That would be like, I'd be like, damn, now that's interesting. But I feel like this is just pointing towards saying it's Yanni Yogi. Yeah. The name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh, oh Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident. It, it figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? I don't know. <laughs> Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tis tisk tisk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. I'm jumping. This man, this witness is Yeti Yogi. Fascinating. 
However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? Sure. <laughs> this is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that this witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I don't, if I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's here, to Yogi? It's okay. I actually, it's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we can compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Tisk tisk tisk. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Uh, why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What, no fingerprints? <laughs> See, uh, I work, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burnt my fingers working with stuff, uh, yep. What? <laughs> Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Tisk tisk tisk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? <sighs> hmm. It seems that the case has been decided now. No! I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we gonna do? I don't even... I didn't even consider that he could have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parents for a, life, a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What, what is it, Nick? No, no you, you're not gonna... Your Honor, the defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Yes, I say I do. <laughs> exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Order, order. Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask, this is a farce, I object. Wait a second. You're the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do so as you suggested. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Cross-examine the fucking parrot. <laughs> I don't care anymore. <laughs> of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, I hope you're ready for the consequences. Dick, this is crazy. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> well, still want to go through with your little game? Oh, fuck yeah, I'm yeah, cross-examining the <laughs> parrot. Let the parrot take the stand. I got him right in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I will cross-examine her, your honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Mount Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Also, fun fact, there was a case that they actually examined a, a parrot, and after it was testifying to its owner's, like, murder, like, to, like, the murder that happened, it was put in witness protection program. <laughs> 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 like, a, like a real parrot? It's a real parrot. <laughs> I hope I can find it later. Is I that know. what this is based on? I have no idea. I saw a Game Theory episode about it when he was talking about like how Phoenix Wright like bends the law and shit. And whatnot. There, there was actually like one that was like, can he actually cross-examine a parrot? Like, yeah, actually, it's been, it happened in the US. And I'm like, actually, really? It's a parrot? It sounds about right. It sounds like something we do here. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. <laughs> it must hurt to be ignored by a bird. I <laughs> am very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please, Era, uh, testify for us. Hi, witness. <laughs> hello, hello, square. <laughs> hmm. 
certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. <laughs> Very well, begin your cross-examination. Yeah, no flaws. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I... I don't know. What do we do, Maya? <laughs> I'm gonna press the parrot. I'm <laughs> pressing the fucking parrot. Hello, hello! Witness! You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you can talk to her. R right, uh, what do I say? You've forgotten something, what's your name? What's the safe number? If I recall, two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget the L6! Squawk! If I get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker has something to do with the L6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello! Squawk! Th that's not what you're supposed to say! Forgot! Something we forgot! Uh-oh, it's not working, Nick! Mom Karma got to the parrot! God damn it! <laughs> this is a different Polly! Yeah, it's a... This is ridiculous, why won't she say it? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Yeah, she did get to the parrot. He threatened a parrot! How does he do that? Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he retrain her to not respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? But how the fuck did he know that shit? I don't know, press again. When is it going to speak? You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to a parrot. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that our owner is Mr. Yogi. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you gotta press the hello hello statement. To get the other ship. Yeah, yeah. Testify. You talk to her. Alright, what's your name or the safe number? Maybe I should get her to say her name? Polly! Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly? Polly? Squirt! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with their owner's identity? <laughs> I don't think it does. Uh. 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 <laughs> yes, it does. Ah, fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who the who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor? The proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... The parrot. <laughs> Wait, what's the file on DL6? Check it. Air in the elevator, oxygen, no clues found. Defense attorney trapped in the elevator, restrained the lost trial. One, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, lost the trial with son, Miles Edgeworth 9. One bullet found in the heart, the murder weapon. Pa court bailiff. Uh, oh, shit. After his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. <laughs> Thanks. Which page is this proof on then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Well, it's mm. a good thing you look, because you're like, mm. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? Oh, well, I gotta check- There's I, a I, suspect's I, data. Yeah, double check it. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the suspect data page. This page is all about information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiancée committed suicide. See? Hmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiancée's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly. Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiancé who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. Well, I see. I guess that is possible. Uh, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. 
Oh, cool. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? <laughs> She's only seven years old. You Lock pervert. This Lock this man up. Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where are we going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. I you just go back to the previous statement. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I love pressing, <laughs> pressing Polly. You can't just say hello to Inspector. So I want to testify. Maybe if I get her to say the number of that safe. Oh, the safe. Why? I was just trying to get her to say anything. Okay. Holly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? One two two eight. One two two eight. My, what a what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Yeah, it's it's the date of the... Statue of limitations. The sta well, yeah, but yeah. it's the state... It's not the date of sex, it? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, I would love if you let me talk. Okay, sorry. Instead of interrupting me for the 100 billillionth time. Might as well just start saying objection and then just uh, interrupting me in everything <laughs> that I say. Should I start doing that from now on? No, I think I'll kill myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Uh... Was it... Wait... Is it in this file? Yeah, I guess so. The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something relating to that safe number? Uh, case summary, right? Yeah. It's on a case summary page. The case summary? Specifically the date in which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number of that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Really? I guess birthdays. Ah, uh, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. Can I steal his credit card information? This has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. Fuck. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What? What are you even saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. I'm surprised you run away. <laughs> witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble and hiding his true identity. Acting. For 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yan Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order, order. Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it was to make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter. 
and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought it was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at the liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent in this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? <laughs> there are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty! Yeah, you did it, Cameron. That is all. This court is adjourned. Objection. Did someone just say objection? It wasn't on karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! <laughs> your Honor, I object to your judgment. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yeni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess! He's going to say he's guilty! He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. How about you stop saying this shit out loud, Maya? Oh no, what do I do? Leave it to Edgeworth. What do you want me to- No, I'm sure Edgeworth thought about this one long and hard. This isn't my place, Cinderfiend. Nick, are you sure? There's nothing we can do about it. This is his problem now. For 15 years, I have had a re reoccurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yeni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean an incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. You think the finger actually, instead of like pointing out, it like, and bends in? <laughs> yeah. Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Ugh. It's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. God damn it! <laughs> I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. We get up in the, like, the recess area and we're like, What the fuck is- <laughs> We were almost done! <laughs> Oh, nice going, fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all of your effort. Uh, Mr. Edward, I, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you. Kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record one more time. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? 
Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edwards is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. R right. Yeah, don't worry, baby. I got you. R wrong. <laughs> don't worry, bro. I got it. That was not a five-minute recess. That was a six-minute recess. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though, it's unconventional for me. I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Bon Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Not anymore. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? Gregory. <laughs> it is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. Hmm. I'm trying to think about what that detail could be. Yeah. Well, he, we're about to hear it again because he's got to confess about his quote-unquote dream. There will be the key, but only if I can get to get it to work. Please, please. The DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composer and com yeah, composer composure and began to argue. <laughs> Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. But the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to cross-examine you, baby. <laughs> that day, I got into the court... Bullshit! <laughs> You're lying! <laughs> What was your, what was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost. Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case. It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. Gregory. Edgeworth. <laughs> yeah. That's when we were leaving. Okay. <laughs> so, there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes, myself, my father, and Yeni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help. Oh. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and started arguing. What did you do then? I was a nine year old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff Yeni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at eat Mr. Yogi, wanting them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? Sorry. 
I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous, but the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was, in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. No, oh, but it said the gun was fired twice. Did it? Yeah. Not that one. Is it Cerny? The murder was fired. Murder twice. Yeah. You want to go in and press it? Well, we have to go through this. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my dream every day. Or echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream? It was a terrible scream, I remember it to this day. To this day? To this day! <laughs> yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I'll ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find that out and quick. Okay. Are you sure it was only- you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file! One more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Observe. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? Yeah, bitch. I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Yeah, the victims. Look at the victim data on this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yeah, the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing of the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. Fuck you! <laughs> the pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? What if Von Karma was in the was in the elevator as well? I think they would all testify, right? Yeah, but they, they, he's saying that he doesn't really remember much. So one of the people is dead. Yeah, but one of them. Yanni Yogi. One of them was the su oh, it's the supposed suspect. Yeah. One of them was a nine-year-old Miles Edgeworth that doesn't really remember much of what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's plausible that that uh, that Von Karma could have been in there too. But uh, that, that's just my my out there theory. Okay. Hmm. I see. I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we've heard. One of those shots was fired by a defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Bullet. <laughs> sure. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. What? what? Impossible. No, no, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? Oh, no, sure. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please think how we feel having to look at this evidence time and time again. Every time you show us ridiculous evidence, I feel well mocked. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't really didn't mean anything by harm, but your honor. Not meaning any harm. And not doing any harm are two different things, Mr. Wright. Try again, Mr. Wright. You gotta fail at least one thing.
Wait a second. What? That was the murder weapon in for the lake one, dude. <laughs> Okay, what if, what if, so, so it was fired three times. Wait, is there anything in here? No who's found the scene. Okay, that's, that's not anything. This, it's kind of fucked up if it's this photograph, but that looks like someone shot from outside. <laughs> or something. This is, okay, this is my next guess. So, the reason I hovered over this was because I was like, I was like, no way would it be that interesting where the... It's the same murder weapon? If, if it was the same murder weapon, and the reason it bears the prints from his right hand is because he threw it. Yeah, I wish. No, yeah. remember he picked it up in the boat. Yeah, I know, right I know. In. But wouldn't, wouldn't that have been really cool yeah. if that was actually what it was? I feel like that this is it, though. Look at this photograph. Don't it make you want to laugh? <laughs> this is the photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. That's the judge, by the way. Oh shit. <laughs> I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves a murder weapon was fired twice at that time of the incident. This photograph proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired? Where? Your Honor, please. Please get a clue. <laughs> Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. Oh yeah, because it was you lodged in his the heart, hole. so there was, there was no way that it could have been there, too. As it is obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor. Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from a pistol. Yet, well, there's also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired the second shot. Well, order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. I'm driving a Honda Civic. <laughs> I actually don't drive, I take a bike. <laughs> yeah, I bike every day. <laughs> At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edwards' heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the, sh after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mm. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary. That's on page one. <laughs> look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Adrius' life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hold the door. Like a rubber band! <laughs> order, I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the scene of the, at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tis tis tis. Fuck! <laughs> I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. He has wisdom? How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet doesn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I don't know, I'm... Sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? 
If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures were for nothing. But no! You said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent! Yeah, and I'm story! <laughs> <laughs> it's just, when you look at the photo, I thought two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who could have killed fire the killing shot, but now I was wrong to think that it could be that simple. This case was stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick! Oh. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found in the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Okay. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no! He's accepted the guilt! Objection! <laughs> Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank and I can't find the words. Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor? I... I object. Tisk tisk tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Mm. Oof! <laughs> Not the oof. I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. <sighs> it must exist. The second bullet? What? What did you just say? N nothing The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. <laughs> Wait, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I, uh... The, the second bullet. It, uh, it exists. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. Uh, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. I, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer. The murderer? Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. <laughs> hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a straight bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Uh, of course there was a need. That's why he took them. Uh, what possible reason could they have had? Well... The reason the murderer had to take the bullet away from the scene was this. I feel like both of these are right. I think it's the first one. I mean, yeah. It's... Um, maybe they thought that the bullet would be used as proof. Proof? It was a special bullet, so they took it with them. If that was the case, then they should have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Why would they only take one of the two shots fired? Oh, right. Mr. Wright, have you really thought this through? No! <laughs> I'm going to have to penalize you. Aw, oh, shit. Did I fuck up? This is... Was there some pressing need for the murder to search for the book? Yeah, I... Uh... Wait. Maybe it's the second one. The murderer didn't need it. Why would the murderer have to spend the time to look for a stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um, uh... Ah, uh, the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Ugh. Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why he had to take the bullet. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene, but, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. 
had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what? Um, maybe the bullet, um, hit the murderer. The bullet hit the murderer? D just saying, for instance. I mean, if it was hit by you, wouldn't you have to take it with you, didn't, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? <laughs> Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? All I'm saying is, think about it this way. How convenient is it that Von Karma had to take a long vacation <laughs> after, after, after that point? You know, Phoenix might be onto something here. I think, I think Von, Von Karma was the murderer after all. He got hit with the stray bullet. And he had to take such a long vacation because he was recovering. And he didn't want people to find out, you know? Yeah. And that's my headcanon. Anyway. <laughs> Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot? And they left with the second bullet still inside of them? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Um, yeah, I guess that's how it would work, yeah. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yeti Yogi, were both unarmed. So that would be... The murderer came from outside, yeah. I love the little pose that he does with like, the arm behind his head. He's like, I, I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. Two men fought inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then, the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. Thanks, also Your Honor. Also the dumbest. <laughs> I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you said. Thanks, Your Honor. What are you saying? Deny it, deny it. No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? <laughs> I was crazy once. Remember what Mr. Kroosberg said yesterday? Oh, God. <laughs> Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. Indeed, wow. It was, must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you say? <laughs> My brain is so fucking large. <laughs> yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he was taking in that many years of prosecution. I wasn't going to say yes or no to that. I wanted you to figure it out yourself. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? We took it because he was injured. <laughs> Which would mean... He could... That could only be one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh, man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. There's a lot of things wrong, Your Honor. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Save it for a better time. <laughs> I don't know the answer. I think I think save it for a better time is bad because the statute of limitations runs out on this. Yeah, today. There's, there's no better time. Yeah. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One sole suspect. Long fuck. <laughs> wow, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? What? <sighs> My hands are shaking. The what? Von Karma! V Von Karma? Don't look at me like that. You mean THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? The, the one standing right over there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet, you 
You pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take a vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, though. Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Uh, Nick, let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Uh, Edgeworth? I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. I would leave a doctor as a witness. Uh, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? Ugh. That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Produce a parrot. <laughs> I know the answer to this. I want to know if you can see it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This this lake photo. <laughs> it's not the lake photo. Yes, Everything I know to that. do with the lake is not relevant to this case anymore. <laughs> Hmm. No, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way it's this, right? <laughs> I really fucking hope it is. <laughs> Alright, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you, much you like it. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... <laughs> Please tell me it's this. Please, please. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't rest surgery leaving evidence leaving an evidence trail. So then, I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. <laughs> they performed surgery on a grip. <laughs> you, you don't mean. I do. There is a possibility that bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We can use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I, I refuse. Y you refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. That's the first time we've ever seen sweat. <laughs> Order, order, order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we al we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out in this case today. It was you who said we should end this right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Let's go! Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. N Nick, what does this mean? I don't know. <laughs> but we have to give it a shot. A shot. Shot in the heart, in your two. Oh, sorry, my hot pockets are going off in the microwave right now. <laughs> it reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma? You... It was you! I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Huh? Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. Oh, you just never fucking got it removed? I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? 
prove. I have no obligation to prove anything. Fuck! <coughs> it is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Why don't we have to do everything? Not I. But Mr. Wright, well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet of Von Karma's shoulder is from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. Oh. That's because you took it out of the record room yesterday, you dickhead. <laughs> With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. Wh what You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. Wh what Who would have thought that you'd dig your own grave by com trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulders to the DLX6 incident. Here is my final proof. That. Th that's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet has preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullets. It's quite accurate. Yeah. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other... Mr. Von Karma has a bullet buried in your shoulder. We can analyze both bullets. Then, if the, the markings match, we can know that they're, that both bullets have been fired from the same gun. That very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Mm -hmm. Mr. Von Karma, you won't let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we can compare the ballistic markings from this bullet with this bullet and solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma. I'm nodding. <laughs> that scream. I've heard that scream before. I've heard a nut before. <laughs> Wait, I know. Help, I can't breathe! Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air! I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! <laughs> Get away! Get away from my father! Dang! <laughs> It's that scream I heard in the elevator, 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! <laughs> Mr. Von Karma. Ah, it was, ah. Only you would dare to find me. So it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you. You left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. Damn. I, I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death. Death. Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. Mon Karma, it is not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but I will have to penalize you. I'm, I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I'd ever known. Me, penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black, the lights must have gone out. I went onto the hall and fell my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. 
I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on, the elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all laying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then it was destiny. Oh, so Von Karma's lefty too? Yeah, I guess. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Damn, so he didn't accuse Yogi because he thought he did it, because he had no idea. <laughs> who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge. What? What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring it into this miserable charade. Now, end it. But very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty! Yay, two things to pay! <laughs> yeah, I know. We went over. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Ah, shit. Yeah, we did it. We solved two crimes in one episode. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a record. <laughs> Nick, Nick, we did it. Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He like a real vampire! <laughs> He's pretending to be all cool, but inside, you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Huh. <laughs> I was pretty close, though. I was sure we had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. Yeah, me too, bitch. <laughs> but now, it's all just a good memory. Uh -huh. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I, I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try. Thank you. You uh, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, right? Y you're welcome. And then the like it cuts to them like standing there, and then they just go. <laughs> and they, <laughs> you know that like shitty image of like the two people like kissing very aggressively. I'll yeah. show you it later. Yeah, that's basically what that's gonna happen. I think you could have done better than that. Mm. Sorry, I'm, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Ooh. Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. Oh. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm. I see. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I feel foolish. Don't worry, take it a little at a time, you'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all! What a. Y'all were great in there! Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You want to stick your hand in a cookie jar even if no one was around. You... you were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, let bygones be bygones. What does that actually mean? Where are bygones? Um... I don't know, just like, maybe like what happened, what happened happened and yeah. just move on. Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lada? Who, me? Oh well, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer real quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Hmm? Isn't that hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. <laughs> <laughs> Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keonce. She She's going to live in Paris. You know who's in Paris? The sugar daddies are in Paris. <laughs> no, like that one song. 
Edward's in Paris. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, it's a, it a stupid joke. Yeah, I know. She left me behind. Should have seen that coming. She 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 brought home this seven foot, ten ten and a half inch cock black guy. <laughs> I can't compete. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Larry, how did you know? <laughs> Cause I was with him before. <laughs> Yo, Edgy, there you are. Uh, yes, uh, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you came along too tonight. Yeah. You come along too tonight, my treat, pal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I. We've we've recorded a lot today, my, yeah. and I've had a lot to voice. Yeah. You need more applesauce. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not please talk for prison food, right? Right. Oh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah. What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not strange. People give money away for celebrating some things. It's $38, right? Huh? What an amount. I mean, it's not little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? N Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38? No. No, Larry, it was you! <laughs> What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? That doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history, yeah. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like you did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. <laughs> <laughs> when something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> I know, I know. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure isn't an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me! <laughs> now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago! Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> I'd say so, yes. There you have it. <sighs> Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. <laughs> That's a shit reason, too. Well, you know, I've always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, you get worked up too easily, too. Death! The death sentence for both of you! <laughs> Man, if only... If I only knew it, I would've become a prosecutor! Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Wanna switch right? <laughs> hey y'all, line up, I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go! And after that, dinner on me. We're having discount ramen tonight. <laughs> Said to Gumshoe took us out to town that night. We celebrated Edward's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Wait, he was? December 29th, 502 in the morning, right in co-law offices. How long were you partying? <laughs> oh, went a little, a little overboard yesterday. <laughs> My head hurts. <sighs> huh? It's still only f 5 p.m.? I am. Um, hmm? What's this? Ladder? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. If I couldn't, I was useless. So I decided to go back to my training. 
I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Goodbye? What time is it? Uh, the first trains in the mountains have already left. To the station! You're the midnight train going anywhere. I guess I'm too late. Hey! Oh, I guess I'm not too Nick. late. <laughs> Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Aww. Be good, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard my Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yeah, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Crossberg and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who saw Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that that you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer up. <laughs> Not the parrot! <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember what happened in the last episode? Von Karma took the letter from us. Maya jumped in the way and took the first shock, and she grabbed something. Oh, this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll pull it. Yeah, I'm gonna shove this in your heart. <laughs> Just like Gregory Edgeworth. Von Karma was convinced that he'd taken all the evidence pertaining to GL6. But you're the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. It was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Uh. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless! Bitch! <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Aww. Thanks, Nick. They even got the anime crying tears coming off. And so my story ends. Time to re time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney I once was. Now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha, huh, don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Um, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Objection! Yeah, we did it! We, you beat the main game! <sighs> what a ride. Oh, yeah. Hey, pal. Mr. Edwards came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoops, that gumption! <laughs> <laughs> then he hung his head low and went right back outside. <laughs> Kinda like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Oh yeah. This is what happens at the end of the Phoenix Wright games. They'll have the old characters from the old cases come in and say like a few little sentences and then leave. But yeah, how'd you, how'd you feel? I felt, I felt good. Huh, Nick? Oh, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. Yeah, Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Bro, why do you keep dating models? <laughs> it, was, it was it was very fun, but I, I can't say it's over yet, because I know there's one more. Yeah, there's one more case. It's more it's more of a bonus case, to be completely honest. Oh, right? Yeah, well, I remember him. I heard that he's been busy lately. I know, not to ring my own bell, but I swear I've taught him everything I know. I'm sure he's grateful. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, there's a draft in here. 
Uh, it was a lot of fun seeing this from a new light of seeing you kind of figure this out. Yeah. Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, oh, the defense attorney who uh, who I wrote that of Tiffany for. Well, I know that I've taken over management at the Watergate. Should I... Would you be in the area? Please stop by. I fucked up that entire thing. Hmm? Oh. You want me to just wrap this up then? No. no. Oh. <laughs> is, is, is this gonna, how long is this I gonna take? I don't remember! Oh, oh, it's you! Phoenix Wright? Oh, yes, me as understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, uh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. How much fucking lemon does this man smell? I don't know, too much. Yeah. I don't know how long this is, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. For, you have people yelling at for, you? For anyone who uh, doesn't know, uh, I was supposed to be gone by 8.30. It He's is 9.01 right now. He's an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You must be a star with the name Phoenix. Did you know that back in the day when the old ham was moving the DVD, and nowadays in the DVD, the... <laughs> I couldn't say any of that. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize how long this would take. I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh man, my voice hurts so fucking bad from talking. <laughs> I, I, I'm pleased to announce the Pring Princess is here. I, I'm not doing his voice. I'm sure that, that Mr. Mr. Wright was a good deal. Oh, and I'm movie. keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know. He's the Pink Princess. That's crazy. I think he like is like maybe like, what what are they from the from the main character, like the protagonist, like the little sidekick. Maybe he's the sidekick, because he's not thin enough to be in that bod. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold sand under the waterfall. I should, I just wanted to visit, but I don't have time, so I sent her some pink princess cards. She says that she wants to buy them where she is. Oh, she can't buy them. I wonder what kind of place that is anyway. The manual. <laughs> he wrote the manual. <laughs> right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk about pink princess, right? But, you know, I'm kind of stuck in the studio the other day, and I saw her. The one inside the pink princess suit? Ugh, what a dog. Look at her shocking the boy of the tender age. You want to know who that is in the pink princess until the Miles Edgeworth investigation case? <laughs> Literally. It's like one of the last cases, too. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Oh, me? I'm a trainer. I've been training the paranormal. You know that photo I took of everyone? Well, just behind them there was a ghost. For real. Now that's a that's a talent. I'm gonna be famous. She's going she's being like one of those YouTubers that does the paranormal investigations and they are like, Who are you? Did you die in this house? <laughs> and they would just be an asshole to ghost. Yeah, see? I think this is the end. That you can sprint out of here. I love the confetti. Yeah. That, that makes it canon that Gumshoe carries around confetti within the every court and just is like, yeah! There it is! A brand new episode has been added. Oh my gosh, it's the blue fucking badger. Yeah. Save your game progress at this point. Alright. In the next one. Episode 5, Rise of the Ashes. Yep. <laughs> well, this was, this was fun, but it's not over yet. Yeah. Till next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>